Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's slightly off-meta setup, we are going to create a build around the classic idea of sticks and stones at play, although not the sticks and stones you are familiar with. My version involves using highly explosive bows to destroy my enemies and the use of improvised explosives to wipe them out from existence, all of this not being the most appropriate towards children. But for the more older crowd, this sort of build allows you to inflict heavy damage in one go against a single or group of targets, and doesn't require a lot to understand it. If you enjoy bows and improvised explosives, then the following is going to be a field day with you. To start, you're going to want to have Gunpowder Gamble, where defeating targets with abilities, solar debuffs, or solar weapons creates an improvised explosive. Then you want On Your Mark, where Precision Finder Blows grant you and allies increased weapon handling and reload speed up to times 3. With how slow hierarchy of needs, draw and reload time is, using On Your Mark should hopefully help fix this one downside of using the following weapon. Outside of that, pairing this with Gunpowder Gamble makes it also interesting combo that allows you to build up to two equally powerful combos that are great with clearing mobs over and over again. Looking into the fragments, Ember Sharp, where your solar ignition spreads scorch to affected targets, Ember Eruption, where your solar ignitions have increased area effect, Ember Searing, where defeating scorched targets grant midi energy and creates fire sprite, Ember Blistering, where defeating targets with solar ignitions grant grenade energy, and Ember of Ashes, where you apply more scorch stacks to targets. The following fragments used will help enhance both our melee and grenade regenerate while also boosting the effectiveness of improvised explosives. I would recommend you use knife trick and fusion grenade combo as this should be enough to trigger an ignition from just these two abilities alone. With improvised explosions, you'll want to lean heavily into what I have shown so we can inflict as much high damage as possible to the target and take in as many benefits doing so. For the mods and stats section, we're going to invest into Discipline and Strength as the main key stats as these will help trigger Scorch and Ignition Burn much faster. For Discipline, a tier 7 stat is recommended as we will be using Frontal Focus mod. This one mod here will boost our stat to tier 10 because of the extra plus 30 it will provide towards our Discipline cooldown rate. As the build focuses on long range most of the time, creating all the power to utilize this will be extremely helpful as long as you're using a Solar Cyber mod and a Powerful Attraction mod. You won't need anything more to help boost this stat further as Fusion Grenades have relatively low cooldown rate to pick and both Ember Searing and Blistering can also give back grenade energy when we use our abilities effectively. A Strength at Tier 8 is also a good stopping point to aim from as Ember Searing effects will also help with getting your mini back fast. Just like a grenade choice, our mini choice also has low cooldown rate, to which it means we don't need to use mods to help further support this area. Also, our secondary weapon of choice here will be the Pugilus perk on it, to help this area out a bit more while active. For armor charges, we have charged up, which is going to make sure we always have plus one extra charge slot, while stacks and stacks is going to increase each charge collected to plus two instead. To help this area's approach, we also have the Solar Siphon, Firepower and Heavy Handed mod to help with getting orbs of power through their respected areas. Having times 2 solar weapon surge mods will also help give our solar weapons a 17% damage boost when active along with Oath Keeper's different tiers it provides. At max tier, we are getting 150% bow damage buff when using Oath Keepers, but truthfully we'll probably get in a tier 1-2 to two, which offers us a 38% to 75% damage boost. Once all of this is done, we then have the Time Dilation mod which will help extend the weapon's surge duration by an extra few seconds, and that should be it from there. Now lastly, weapons being used, we have the Mikael Reverence with Puglis and Swashbuckler, which fits quite well into the build. As we will be using our throwing knives quite a bit, the following weapon will help us out immensely with not only getting back mini energy first, but also enhancing the weapon's damage via Swashbuckler and Max. However, the real reason why I'm using the following weapon with this setup is because of the handling speed when paired with improvised explosives. As my explosives can get launched at any time, using my bow to detonate them isn't wise since the weapon being used fires and reacts too slow. This is where this sidearm comes in, as it's both fast to use straight away, has relatively good range attached to it, and is full auto, so I have less chance of missing my shots. I would recommend you do the same by looking for a weapon that has the Puglis or Swash Buckler on it for part of the theme of the build, while also looking for something that has a high handling speed to it. 
The sidearms and SMGs are of course the best choices here. We then have a hierarchy of needs bow, which is utterly a fantastic exotic that not many people talk about. Although slow and slightly clunky to use at first, this weapon massively makes up the damage by the amount of damage it provides once you get its guidance rings going. Upon activating this with our surge mods and oath keepers, we will be hitting well into the high damage ranges which makes it feel more like a heavy exotic bow at play. Now I know the bow isn't easy to get here, so don't fret, as a bow can work with any bow you have available, although a solo bow would be more ideal and nice here. So for the overall conclusion, with the recent buff to Oath Keepers now allowing bows to be even more impactful, the following setup is simple, yet fun loadout that you can use for a guilty number of things. I like to call this build the Sticks and Stones build because of how our bow and subclass work together, for example. Getting kills with the bow will build up guidance rings for you to use for that extra level of damage, while at the same time you'll also be building up gunpowder gamble energy to use your improvised explosives. As both of these build up at the same time and length, you can use this to build up immensely huge damage in one area and repeat this as many times as you like. And to really top this off, the ignition and scorch build you can do with your abilities allow us to fit very well against champions and bosses in legend to even master content. This simple yet effective build is great once you master the one to approach and from here you can bring out a ton of team support just from netting a simple kill. To be fair, this build kind of feels like it's more designed for PvP with how well it functions. And to be fair, if you can master it in that environment, then it becomes finally good at clearing out campers quite easily. Now of course, like a number of my builds, I have a few issues with this one here. And one example is that the bow is very slow to fire upon if you don't have the catalyst unlocked to it yet. Now I have used on your marks aspect to help with reloading and it did fairly well help out, but just not by a lot. You then have the issue of detonating your improvised explosives. I have a side on with relatively high handling speed, so I can shoot it at a moment's notice. However, this will cause a few issues here and there if you decide to use this in any content that requires anti-champion items for that specific slot, which will help you up dealing with champions there and then. On top of that, it also leaves you vulnerable with dealing with aggressive enemies up close, as my side arm is good against more minor threats but mages and ultras, it becomes quite a issue. I also don't recommend you use something like this in GMs because, well, common sense. For the few quirks it has, the build plays practically well just like any bow build would, but the interesting combo provided to players make it feel more unique than your standard setup. I would highly recommend you give this a try at least once, and then once you've got a feel for it, go ahead and customise the bow to whatever you like. I'm very sure you'll get some interesting results on your end, but what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.